Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So the case that I have for you today is one that I have seen a lot of people talking about and I didn't know what it all entailed at first, but after looking more into it, let me just say it's awful. I have never been into the whole family vlogger thing because most of the time you can tell that the parents are staging their young children to say and do certain things for the camera and filming them before they're even old enough to understand the audience that they're performing for or to consent to their faces, bodies, their lives, all being placed on the internet for anyone and everyone to see. If you want to post your child for your friends and your families to see, then so be it. That I can sort of get behind, but what I can't get behind, first of all, parents recording their children when they're having a meltdown or throwing a tantrum or whatever to use as an example of how to parent a child. You can easily explain the situation and give your parenting advice without recording your child in a very vulnerable emotional state. What I also can't get behind is just taking a video of your young children or even your teenage children and posting it online for the entire world to see. There are plenty of predators online and a lot of these family vloggers will take videos of their children during very vulnerable stages like the one that I'm about to talk about. They show them shaving. There's some that talk about very personal, deeply personal issues with their young daughters and sons. And there are predators out there who just watch this for their entertainment because they are sick. All of these parents know that these predators are out there, but these videos will make money. They make them a lot of money. So they continue posting these videos despite the fact that they know that disgusting predators are watching their children in these very vulnerable states because they're making money. So I think a lot of these family vloggers put up the front that they're these amazing parents, that they care so much about their children, but in reality, what they care about is money. What they care about is how they look to other people, how other people perceive them. They don't care that they're exploiting their children for money. They don't care that there's people out there that are watching those videos for harmful reasons. All they see is the green. I can't even imagine what it's like to be a child and you're having an emotional overload or you're having a very intimate personal moment in your puberty or growth and development or even just being a child and instead of sitting down with you and being a parent, your parent whips out their phone, shoves the camera in your face and records you and then puts it out there for everybody to see. Imagine having those private moments just being out there for the world to see, you go to school and all of the other kids in your class, if they had a tantrum last night, if they had gotten in trouble for whatever reason, if they got bad grades, no one's the wiser, no one else knows. But every single kid in that classroom knows that you wouldn't eat your dinner last night or that you had a difficult time with your math homework or whatever it is. It's just really disturbing and I'm so interested to see how these family vloggers affect their children when they eventually grow into adults, how having their lives plastered for the world to see will affect how they see themselves when they grow older. It's almost like child actors, but in my opinion, I think it's worse. Because a lot of the time, at least these child actors can have their private lives to themselves, or at least in my day, not that I'm old enough to be saying that, but when I was a kid, child actors pretty much had their private lives to themselves, or at least if they went through something difficult in their private lives, we didn't know about it. But now, every moment of these children's lives are just being out there for everybody and anybody to see, and I can't even imagine how that's going to impact the psyche of our next generation. Either way, the reason that I'm talking about this is because we are going to be discussing a case that involves a family vlogger who has gotten themselves into some very deep trouble. I have never watched any of these videos before, and frankly, I don't really want to watch all of them, so I really just watched the other creators who talked about them and compiled their videos together because I would rather give them views than anybody who is accused of doing some of the horrific things that this family is accused of. So now 41-year-old Ruby Frankie and her husband Kevin are the parents to six children, Sherry, Chad, Abby, Julie, Russell, and Eve. They are from Springsville, Utah, and they are members of the Church of the Latter-day Saints or the Mormon Church. And back in 2015, 
Ruby started their family vlogging style YouTube channel, Eight Passengers. From all accounts, it started off as innocent as you can get, with Ruby just walking her young daughter to and from preschool each morning and recording those walks. But after that, she started posting more and more about their lives and the children and, you know, being a mother, and it quickly gained a huge following, gaining over 2 million subscribers until the channel was removed just a few months ago. According to an interview that Ruby did in 2016, she started the channel basically as a way to document her life and as a way to feel present in her children's lives. She posted every weekday, Monday through Friday, posting videos about the trials and tribulations of being a mother. She talked about what it was like to homeschool her son, Chad, who was in fifth grade at the time, how to cook some basic meals for the family, and different parenting tips. She also saw the channel as an opportunity to talk about the family's faith in the Mormon church. They recorded one of their missions trips to Australia where they had the opportunity to show the world what it was really like. In this interview, she said, quote, I just want women who are still nursing babies, women who are still trying to get their families, women who are not sleeping through the night to see what it looks like at the finish line, to see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and it's beautiful and it's powerful and it's worth it. It's worth all the effort that families put into their family. However, the more views the channel got, the more it seemed that Ruby changed her style of video and the more it seemed that rather than just being this innocent channel who just wanted to share what her life was like and what it was like being a mother, it seemed more so like she wanted to be famous, she wanted to make as much money as possible, and it seemed like she thought that people wanted to see something else or maybe she just got more comfortable with sharing more of her life and who she really was. But either way, Ruby started posting videos that showed her disciplinary style, which a lot of people started to have issues with. People thought that she was overly strict, authoritarian, and sometimes outright cruel. People had a problem with how much of the family and children's intimate moments that she was posting. There are videos where Ruby is going up to her children and asking them deeply personal questions or talking about personal topics or trying to get them to talk about things that frankly, children do not want to be talking about in front of a camera. She would discuss their grades anytime they got in trouble at school. She talked again, like I mentioned earlier, when the daughters wanted to start shaving and other personal things like that. She would go on camera to show herself yelling at her children and punishing them. There are even videos where the children are begging their mother to stop recording them that they don't want whatever situation was they were in online but she didn't care. She recorded anyways, she continued to invade her children's privacy posting the videos online for millions of strangers to see. Because I really won't get anything for summer. I won't be able to go anywhere. No, I don't have any friends. No iPads, no TV, no. By 2020, there was a bunch of videos that she started posting where people pointed out a lot of concerning situations that Ruby was showing. They accused her of neglecting her children and sometimes abusing them. In one video, Ruby talked about how she didn't let her then six-year-old daughter Eve bring a packed lunch for school because she forgot to pack it before school. In that same video, she talked about how she didn't want people helping Eve. She didn't want them giving her food or offering their food or offering her lunch because she was never going to learn her lesson if she ate lunch. There were multiple other instances of her withholding food like breakfast and dinner from her children as punishment. In some posts, she said that her children needed to go hungry to learn their lessons and she often threatened them that they would lose their eating privileges if they didn't behave. Eve did not pack a lunch today and can I bring a lunch over to the school? This happens quite often when you're having raising children um, because I know that her teacher is uncomfortable with her being hungry and not having a lunch and it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with lunch. Um, but I, I responded and just said, Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning and she actually told me she did pack a lunch. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry and hopefully Hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. I hate to tell you this, honey, but 
Unless you find a friend who's willing to share some of their food with you, I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to eat. But if you're not responsible for your lunch and your lunch money, that's the natural consequence. And I'm really sorry you're learning this the hard way. I will have a wonderful, yummy snack. Just hang in there today and, and just make, it, make up your mind. You're going to be really careful and make sure you grab your stuff when you go to school next time. And maybe you have a, a good friend who will share some of their sandwich with you or something. That's all. I'm really sorry. He sounded like... He was going to cry. Torturing him. Stop it. I know you're not, but it looks like you are. Okay, Russell. <laughs> I'm only going to say it one more time, and then you're going to lose the privilege to eat dinner. There was another time that Ruby took Christmas away from Russell and Eve, saying that they had been selfish that year. She said that instead of Christmas, she gave them the gift of responsibility sitting them down and saying that they're not going to get Christmas because of their own selfish behaviors over that year. Which again, just imagine sitting there with your entire family as they get to celebrate, but you don't. Instead, you're ostracized. Your siblings are told, these two were bad. They don't get to celebrate with you guys. And God forbid if there's other family members there, they're embarrassed in front of aunts and uncles and maybe even grandparents sitting there being ostracized and embarrassed, being told that you are bad, you are selfish, you don't deserve anything unlike the rest of the family because you misbehaved. Then, to add to that, Ruby made another video explaining that her children do not get personal space. She said that the home is her space and if the children want any space to themselves, that they're going to have to get their own space. Which again, just irks me. Every single human being, no matter your age, deserves the most basic levels of personal space and privacy and telling children who have absolutely no control over their lives that they will have to take on the impossible responsibility of having their own space is just toxic. It's just like telling, it's just like those parents that tell a 10 or 12 year old like, you don't have any rights in this house, maybe you should go out and get a job and make your own money and have your own stuff so that you can have a responsibility. It's literally impossible. Obviously, they know that. Obviously, they cannot get a job. They cannot make their own money. So, I just think it's toxic when parents try to put their children in this type of impossible situation where I'm sure if the children could, they probably would get a job. So, they did have a little bit of control. It's not up to them as children to get a job and to make money and to provide for the household. It is their job to do chores, to help out around the house, to help contribute to the family environment and make it a safe and comfortable place to be. But it is not the parent's job to deprive them of their own personal space and privacy. It's not a parent's job, and this might be controversial, but it's not a parent's job to know every single little detail about their child. They deserve to have some level of privacy, even if it's from their parents. That's just my opinion, but let's keep going. In another incident that Ruby shared, her then 15-year-old son, Chad, said in a video that his bedroom was taken away and he had been sleeping on a beanbag for seven months as punishment. No. My bedroom was taken away for seven months and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. You've been sleeping on a beanbag I've been sleeping on a beanbag since October. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave my room back like two weeks ago. This was because he pulled a prank on his younger brother, Russell, and I guess a therapist told them that they should be sleeping in separate spaces. So instead of giving him another mattress or moving one of them into a different room, he didn't get a room and he had to sleep on a bean bag. After these two main incidents, so people finding out that she restricted food as punishment and taking away the child's bedroom, by early 2020, YouTubers and TikTokers started posting videos to expose what they perceived as child abuse at the hands of Kevin and Ruby. There were also neighbors or viewers. I don't think it's clear which one. I think it was a neighbor, but somebody did call Child Protective Services on them after these incidents. After having CPS called on them, of course, Kevin and Ruby took to social media to dispel the rumors. They said that this is just a bunch of internet drama caused by drama YouTubers and TikTokers who want to use their name to stir up trouble and get views. They said that people were taking the video clips out of context and that when punishing their children, they gave them choices in order to teach them the consequences of their own actions. There was even a change.org petition created for the Child Protective Services to step in 
and I believe that petition got over 17,000 signatures, but no action was taken on the change.org petition because it was never actually affiliated with law enforcement. But when it did come to the call that CPS received, the Division of Family and Child Services in Utah stated that the case was closed because the claims were unsupported. Either way, after these abuse claims got more serious and more and more viewers started confronting Ruby and Kevin about the toxic behaviors, in January of 2020, the videos slowed down until they eventually stopped. But Ruby's YouTube ventures did not stop. By June of 2022, Ruby announced that she was joining a new YouTube venture, taking part in a new YouTube channel called Connections, a channel that focused on life coaching. A lot of people called this channel a cult because of the extreme views and a lot of the polarizing topics. The channel was co-founded and co-run by Jody Hildebrandt, who is a licensed pornography addiction therapist. On the channel, Ruby took the role of a mental health coach and these two women said that their mission was to help people successfully navigate life and relationships, calling themselves the Moms of Truth. Now, Jodi was actually put on probation for her counselor's license in early 2012 because there was a patient who was there for marriage counseling and began discussing porn addiction with her. And she went ahead and discussed this man and his issues with the LDS church leaders at Brigham Young University without the patient's knowledge or permission. I don't know the exact details of this man's position with the university, but based on what Jody told the staff, this man lost his position with BYU. I believe he lost his job. He obviously lost a lot of money because of this. And he went on to say that Jody made things up about him, made up lies in order to destroy his life. Because of this, Jody was put on probation for 18 months. She had to work under a supervisor during that time who was to instruct her on issues relating to confidentiality, boundaries, and relationships. She also had to undergo a psychological evaluation and complete any necessary treatment before she could get her license back. After that probationary period, she did end up getting her license to practice back. Either way, the videos that were posted on the Connections channel concerned viewers pretty much immediately. They talked about some more extreme views, like I said, saying once again that children do not deserve privacy. They said that children don't deserve unconditional love. And Jody even suggested at one point that a woman was asking for a rape that she suffered. After this and the downfall of the Eight Passengers YouTube channel, the family itself started to crumble. By September of 2022, the oldest daughter of the family, 20-year-old Sherry, she revealed that she was no longer in contact with the family. She also said that she does not support the extreme views that the Connections page boasted. It was said that Chad, the second oldest, moved out of the home as well, but he has not said anything publicly, which I absolutely understand. He probably just wants his privacy after it was taken away from him for his entire life. But just last month in August of 2023, Everything within the family came to a head. At around 10.50 a.m. on August 30th, Ruby and Kevin's 12-year-old son, Russell, climbed out of a window of Jody Hildebrand's home located in Ivins. He ran to a neighbor's house asking for food and water, and when the neighbor saw him, he clearly looked malnourished. He had severe open wounds all over his body, and the neighbor actually noticed duct tape around his ankles and wrists. So, immediately, the neighbor called 911 to report this. The female does have duct tape around each ankle. He's not telling the RP why. And said that there's sores around his wrists and ankles. He's becoming, or correction, the RP is becoming emotional regarding the child's health. I'm going to go ahead and have medical data on this one. 8 Alpha 6 will be upstairs on the second floor. Copy. Do you have a unit number? 12XO11. I think I may have found Dad. Also, a Kevin Frankie address out of Springville. Can I get a call from each other house on Wagyu? And also a vehicle search on Jody. She's showing a white Lexus ES today. Control 12XO11. Can you hold the air? We're searching the house. Hey, LT. There's a panic room inside the garage. Downstairs, underneath the garage. 
Yeah, he says you, it's kind of it's downstairs and it's underneath one of the garages, and he's calling it a safe room. He says he said something about Fort Knox, so I don't know if it has a Fort Knox door or safe on it, but that's what he's talking about. Temple, we've got it, but we can't get into it. My guess is that would be where they're at. He says it's a large room, it's a panic room. This one says Liberty Safe Company, it's got a big wheel on the front. I'm at the front door. On this case that we're working, we have the custodial parent of the child in the ER. She just came to our PD and then she took off when we said cops will talk to her in a second. So we're hoping maybe someone can go to the, or the cop at the ER can restrict access from her to her kids. That's something you can relate to them. When police arrived, they too saw a young boy that was severely malnourished. He was also covered in deep lacerations, apparently from being tied up with a rope. He was then transported to the hospital for treatment, and while that was happening, police went ahead and searched Jody's home. Upon entering, they found three children in the home, including 10-year-old Eve, all of which were emaciated and malnourished. By 9.33 p.m. that same day, Jody and Ruby were located in Ivan's and they were arrested and taken into custody. And at this time, each woman is being charged with six counts each of aggravated child abuse. After the arrest, Sherry posted a photo of a police car to her Instagram story with the caption, finally. In another story, she wrote, quote, Today has been a big day. Me and my family are so glad justice is being served. We've been trying to tell police and CPS for years about this, and I'm so glad they finally decided to step up. Kids are safe, but there's a long road ahead. Please keep them in your prayers and also respect their privacy. After the arrest and charges were made public, neighbors of the Frankie family came out to talk about what they witnessed in the time and years before the arrest. Two neighbors spoke anonymously, but they shared a lot of concerning information. So for a while, these neighbors said that Ruby would try to insert herself into their lives and kind of projected her beliefs on them, even giving them a sermon-like lecture over what she considered an inappropriate poster of a woman that was hung up in their garage. They also talked about how Ruby regularly withheld food from the children as punishment. They also said that Ruby kicked Kevin out of the home quite a while ago, but even though Kevin wasn't there, Ruby would leave the home for weeks at a time with the children still inside. One neighbor said that Eve would often wander around the neighborhood while Ruby was away looking for other kids to play with. She would knock on the doors of random neighbors and would ask if their kids could play. A lot of times this would happen during school hours, so the parents would tell her that the kids won't be home for another three or four hours and she would say that she would just sit there and wait. Of course, this said to neighbors that Eve probably was not attending school. They could see just how malnourished and neglected these children appeared, so they tried to get CPS involved multiple times over the course of a year. One neighbor in particular recalls making a call to CPS where she got a response saying that they'll check it out. She said that she saw authorities making a wellness check, but nobody answered the door, so the officers left, and it seemed that no further action was taken. During this time, after these allegations started to come out, Ruby, who had once went over to her neighbors and tried inserting herself into their lives, they said that she started to act very strange. She stayed inside of the home. She stopped talking to neighbors and she even taped up papers to cover the windows so you couldn't see inside. People in the area were very frustrated at the lack of action by police and one neighbor even said that when all those police came to their home to arrest Ruby, they genuinely thought that they were going to bring those children out in body bags because of how severely they had been neglected and how long the police had ignored their requests for help. Police say this is the house a young child escaped from and went to a neighbor's house asking for food and water. They said that that child was severely malnourished along with another one they found inside the same home. 
Now we talked to neighbors in this area and they said that they don't really know the homeowner of this home very well, but she's in business with a woman who has gained a huge following online with YouTube videos getting hundreds of thousands of views. Police say a clearly malnourished 12 year old child crawled out of the window of Hildebrand's Ivan's area home. A neighbor called 911 when he showed up at their house asking for food and water. Officers say his wrists were duct taped. He had wounds from being tied up across his body. Investigators say they found a 10 year old girl inside the same house who was also malnourished. Frankie's family vlogs ended without a specific reason given. Frankie now works for the Utah County Company Connections along with Hildebrandt. It's described as a treatment program for those with mental health and addiction issues. Connections has been the subject of a lot of controversy, specifically for its teachings on parenting. Many of Frankie's siblings are also online content creators. Her sisters released a social media statement saying, quote, Ruby was arrested, which needed to happen. Jody was arrested, which needed to happen. The kids are now safe. Thankfully, the children are still alive, though they are all traumatized and badly injured and probably have a lot of therapy to get through for the rest of their lives to recover from this. According to the county attorney, Jody and Ruby are accused of, quote, causing or permitting serious physical injury to the victims in three different ways. A combination of multiple physical injuries or torture, starvation or malnutrition that jeopardizes life, and causing severe emotional harm. Each count carries a max of 15 years in prison and a $10,000 fine. As of right now, Kevin has not been arrested, but he did say that his focus is keeping the children together under his fatherly care. It's unclear whether he knew about the extreme abuse or if he was involved, but he was seen at the family home in the time before the arrest, so it's not known. Now, the children were found at Jody's home, so it's possible that most of the abuse happened there, like tying them up with the ropes and starving them to the point that they looked very emaciated. So, I guess you could say that Kevin wasn't aware of how bad the abuse had gotten because he was kicked out a while ago, but as of right now, we don't know. In my opinion, I think he at least knew about the beginning stages of the abuse because he was still with them when these toxic behaviors were coming out. And based on what we know, I hope that they aren't placed back with their father. I hope that they're placed back with family who will love them, who will take care of them, and who will treat them with the dignity and the respect that they deserve. So this is all that we know in this case right now. I think all of this is very shocking, to say the least. I think the fact that the family showed clear signs of toxic and abusive and neglectful behaviors shows a lot, if not all of these physical and neglect cases start with these behaviors. Behaviors that others can see and can be concerned about. I wish that the police took these allegations more seriously, seeing as how even being away from the home for that long and not enrolling your child in school are both illegal. At least that should have been looked into right away and they probably would have seen at that point that these children are being harmed. I think that this is how abuse turns into death, with the police not looking into things soon enough or them just passing it off as not severe enough to have an arrest. I am so thankful that little Russell was able to escape and to get the ball rolling on this investigation and arrest. Again, I'm happy that all of the children survived this, and again, I really, really hope that they're placed with good family members who will give them a wonderful life for the rest of their lives. But as of right now, that is all I have for today's case, and as with any recent case, I will be sure to keep you all as up to date on any new information that comes out. I'm sure a lot more is going to come out in the next few weeks. I'm sure that because of how highly publicized this case is, we will probably find out a lot more. I personally think that there was so much more abuse going on behind closed doors with these lacerations and how malnourished they were and just all of these other things. I think there was even more neglect and abuse going on than we even know about right now. So, whatever information comes out, I will keep you guys all updated. But that is all I have for today's case. I want to know what you guys all think about this entire situation in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think is going to happen. Let me know what you think was going on behind closed doors. 
If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!